It looks like the Arizona Diamondbacks finally have their designated hitter, and it's maybe not the guy that you were thinking about. Steve Zinsmeister and Alex Weiner joins me as well on the Ain't No Fang podcast. Alex, lovely to see you. Uh, let's get your reaction right off the jump. Jock Peterson is now the designated hitter for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Maybe this is the last move uh, of a very successful and busy offseason for the Diamondbacks. What's your initial reaction to Jock Peterson being the new designated hitter? Steve, good to see you. I mean, you're on the uh, we're on the ain't no fang hotline right now, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, Jock Peterson, uh, the new DH for the Diamondbacks. Initial reaction is um, they're better. They're a deeper lineup. He is a, has been a good hitter throughout his entire career. He hits the ball really, really hard um, and has throughout most of his career. Last season, he's pretty elite as far as exit velocities and um, you know hard hit rates. And so this is somebody who hits the ball hard and somebody who's going to add some punch as a left-hander in the middle of the lineup. Because when you look at the lineup construction, back to the postseason, it's Corbin Carroll, Cattell Marte, and then you have kind of a run of righties unless you you know throw Alec Thomas a little bit higher, which they did a few times in the playoffs. So, yeah, it gives them a little bit more roster balance, uh, especially when they go up against right-handed pitching. The big question with him is what do they do against lefties because he does have platoon splits, which wouldn't have been there. You mentioned the DH options, like – you know, J.D. Martinez, Jorge Soler, Justin Turner, these are all, you know, DH options who are still on the free agent market and don't have necessarily that extreme platoon split. I mean, all three of those guys can hit lefties and righties pr- both pretty well. So this is going to be a little bit different. This opens up some more questions. But at the same time, you know, this is a guy who has 38 home runs the last two seasons with an 820 OPS as a member of the Giants since 2022. He was an all-star in 2022. Last year was a little bit um, of a day down year statistically, but there was some hard hit stuff that suggests that he may be gotten a little bit of the short end of the stick. So yeah, I think it, you know, it makes them a deeper lineup. And when, you know, we project out what their lineup could look like, especially against righties, it's pretty deep. And that leaves off some depth guys who would start on some other teams for sure. So I think it makes them better. It certainly felt to me like it's been well over a month since the team was linked to names like J.D. Martinez, Justin Turner. You mentioned Solaire as well. And because Jock's name came up later, I think that's a byproduct of the re-signing of Lourdes Gurriel as a right-handed hitting outfielder. Currently, the only right-handed hitting outfielder that they have on the roster And so I think bringing Gurriel back kind of opened them up to the possibility of bringing in a lefty DH because they didn't want another person who was left-handed. They needed a righty. They got it. And this lineup is not as left-handed heavy as we thought it was, maybe, or maybe as it was a year ago. Dalton Varsho's gone, uh, certainly, and the outfield is still very left-handed heavy. But when you look at the rest of the lineup, I mean, Marte's a switch hitter. Perdomo's a switch hitter. Really, it was just Corbin Carroll was the only really solid left-handed hitter you have. Alec Thomas is a lefty, of course. Um, But with additions like Suarez and Gurriel coming back, I think it made a lot of sense for them to kind of balance out the the lineup with a left-handed hitter. Um, So let's dive a little bit more into what you do against lefties or what you do late in the game uh, that was a righty starter, but maybe they throw a lefty reliever at you to try to counterbalance Peterson, Alec Thomas near the bottom of the lineup. What are your options right now with the way the roster is currently constructed. Right. And I I guess to to give a little bit more context on the splits that we see from Jock, I mean, last year, the Giants didn't really let him hit lefties a ton. Um, He had a 786 OPS against righties and 606 against lefties, but he only had 52 clearances against left-handed pitching. So they avoided it as much as they possibly could with him being a mostly everyday player, but um, definitely had a platoon there. So, yeah, I'm curious if the Diamondbacks approach it similarly. Obviously, option one is you just roll with him as the everyday DH at the start of the season and you adjust as you go. On the 40-man roster right now, there's not a lot of obvious options to platoon with him. Right now, the most obvious would be Emmanuel Rivera. If you keep him, if he makes the team as sort of the backup, you know, third baseman slash first baseman, we'll obviously see what happens with Jordan Lawler. That's going to be, you know, a big player in all of this is, you know, does he starts it in AAA to get more reps because he only played 16 games there last year, or does he make the team? Does it, is his spring so spectacular that he makes the team and they find, you know, a more regular role for him. And if, you know, if that's the case, if he makes the team, then, you know, maybe against lefties, you're looking at a situation where you can start him Perdomo, 
and Suarez. And then, you know, Suarez moves to the DH, Perdomo to third, Lawler short. And then that's kind of how you roll with it at the beginning. But then what do you do with Lawler against righty? So, you know, there's some, this, it's going to be a little bit fluid. One name to keep in mind here is, is Kevin Newman, uh, who signed a minor league deal with the Diamondbacks this offseason, played for the Reds last year, played for the Pirates the year before that, and both seasons hit lefties pretty well. So that's, he's a candidate, you know, if he makes the team, especially if Lawler goes down for more seasoning and AAA to start the season. If Newman is on the team, then he's somebody who has a decent track record against lefties too. Um, and then, of course, there's obviously the option of do they have another move left in them via free agency or a trade with, you know, kind of a surplus of left-handed hitting, you know, position players that they have on the roster. So let's dive into that a little bit more then. Uh, I think a lot of people thought this is kind of the last bullet in the chamber, so to speak. Go out and get the DH you need and you're kind of done. This team has not addressed the bullpen because they haven't had to for the first time maybe ever. Uh, The starting rotation, they obviously made a big splash with Eduardo Rodriguez. They have a lot of options to compete for the fifth spot. Tommy Henry had a decent year last year. Ryan Nelson certainly had his bright spots in the World Series of all places. Um, So they have options there too i don't know that there's a glaring hole in the lineup most of the things you would say uh might require some tweaking is like backup catcher maybe you could add another right-handed hitting outfielder um but for the most part this team's pretty well set if jock peterson's number which it looks like he got a guarantee of a roughly 12 million dollars about 9 million this year minimum and then he's going to get a 3 million dollar buyout and an option for next year we'll see how that works out um, but if that dollar value is a little lower, I assume, than some of those other DH options would have been, is there a little bit of wiggle room? Do they have a couple million that they could throw at a backup catcher or another right-handed hitting outfielder? What would you do if you were the Diamondbacks? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they've already gone up beyond you know their record for highest payroll for a single team. So you know, what's another couple million dollars, right, for us speaking here? Um, yeah, I, I don't know if, if this is the last thing, if they feel like they have enough options internally already, if maybe they make a couple of more minor league additions that, you know, could potentially play. Um, yeah. What else do you do from here? You know, it, it sort of depends how confident they are in that like fifth rotation spot. They have plenty of guys to compete for it. And that could be a situation where, you know, if it's, you know, still, you know, a question going into, you know, the halfway point of the season, they haven't really had to trade many assets this offseason to improve the team. Peterson's a free agent signing. Guriel, they brought back as a free agent. Rodriguez was a free agent. They, they traded for Suarez in, you know, a bit of a salary dump for the Seattle Mariners. Um, so they didn't have to give up any of their top prospects or somebody who was even on the postseason roster for them last year. So they still have assets if they want to go out and improve the team you know, not even now, but like at the deadline, if they're in a position to compete and they want to, you know, there's clearly a hole that opens up at that point and they need to go address it. Um, you know, when looking at some of the free agents, I mean, it's, there's still a lot of options because it's been an incredibly slow moving off season when it comes to, you know, free agency, we were like chatting before, you know, we, you know, jumped on air here. What? Oh, could Gary Sanchez make sense to fill backup catcher and DH as a right-handed hitter? Um, is he, does he probably price out of them? Maybe I know you brought up with Merrifield as a right-handed bat who could play multiple positions, but he would have to sign on to be sort of, you know, a, a super utility kind of backup player. Maybe there's somebody like, I don't know, looking down at like some right-handed outfielders. If you need another right-handed outfielder, like Randall Gritchick, who the past two seasons has had OPS over 900 against left-handed pitching. So there's certainly still guys out there to look at if they go the external route, but uh, I'm not sure how much more is in the chamber. I just love to have one more right-handed hitting outfield bat off the bench because you currently don't have any because Gurriel will be starting in left field most days, righty or lefty on the mound. And so what do you do when you get to the bottom of the lineup in the eighth or ninth inning and they throw a lefty against you and you've got Jock Peterson and Alec Thomas, maybe in the same inning coming up 
and you're going to flip out Peterson for whatever bench option you have that you like. Maybe it's Lawler moves into the field and Marte moves to DH, whatever. But then what do you do with Alec Thomas if if he is to be a platoon player in some of the ways that they did earlier in the postseason and most of last year? Um, I'd like to see him develop against lefties, and I think at some point he needs to start getting those opportunities to do so. Um, but do you want to have another option off of the bench who can play the outfield and then you can just slide Corbin Carroll over to center field and have a better right-handed hitting option? I would like that. I brought up Whit Merrifield. Um, I have no idea how much he would cost. I don't even know if he would want to take a role that is kind of a backup, play anywhere, any any day kind of role. Um, but that's like the ultimate I would want uh, like pie in the sky idea for me. I have no clue if they have the money to do that. I have no clue if he would want that role or if he would want to even come to Arizona. Um, but that's just something that's like kind of on my back burner at this point. I think if the Diamondbacks went into tomorrow, uh, into the season tomorrow with what they've got, they'd be fine. This is a fine team. They've built it really well. I think the off season has been a success in a lot of ways. They'd be okay. Um, but if we're going to get greedy a little bit and I get one more thing, I think it would be a right-handed hitting bat off of the bench that can play the outfield. Yeah, but then how many how many roster spots do you designate to, to outfielders? I, I guess it depends on a few things, right? Because if you, you know, let's say they sign Randall Gritchick, just total speculation, just uh, he's a right-handed bat who's a free agent who I, I don't know how much this market's going to be, but let's say they sign him. Okay. And then do you go into opening day with, you know, Gritchick, Peterson, who, who's not – probably not going to play much outfield if any outfield for this team, just because they have better defensive options out there. And he has been a net negative defensively in the outfield, um, at least in the last few years of his career. Um, so let's say, but let's throw him in the outfield pool just for the sake of argument. So they have those two, Carol, Thomas, Guriel, and then Jake McCarthy. So that's, you know, that's six spots for outfielders. And then you have two for catchers, Gabby Moreno and whoever wins the backup spot. And then that leaves you with five spots for infielders, you know, your Walker, Marte, Suarez, Perdomo, your starters, and then potentially Lawler, maybe to start it's Newman. Um, how do you feel about sort of like constructing the roster that way and maybe leaving yourself a little bit light with infielders? However, Newman can play multiple positions and Jock has a little first base experience, not a ton, but if they can get him to a point where they feel okay with him playing over there, How do you feel about that roster construction? Uh, The name that it kind of leaves out is Jace Peterson, um, who is their Mm -hmm. left-handed hitting corner infielder. I I would think he and Newman would probably be the backups, at least to start the season. I'm still kind of operating under the assumption that Jordan Lawler is going to get some more seasoning in AAA, like you said earlier. Um, just because I think you got to get him at bats and he's got to get opportunities okay. against righties. He cannot start the season as a break glass in case of emergency against a lefty guy because then he's not playing every day. Um, and in a heavy right handed division where the Dodgers have all right handed starters right now, uh, the Giants are heavy right handed, uh, the Padres are certainly looking like they're going to be heavily right handed. I don't know that there's a major role for Jordan Lawler right now. He's going to have a big role on this team at some point in 2024. He has to. Um, But I I think that Jace Peterson has a better chance of making the lineup just because he's the left-handed corner hitting infielder, uh, left-handed hitting corner infielder. And so that's the one name that I think is going to add into that mix. So maybe you're right. Maybe you don't have six outfielders. Um, but I would like to have multiple right-handed hitting outfielders on the team if that's possible. That, I guess, would mean that you would have to figure something out with Jake McCarthy, or I I don't know. I don't know what this ends up looking like. It's going to be fascinating once we get closer to opening day. Yeah, they have so many guys who don't have an obvious role, right? But, like, position players who, you know, have contributed before. Like, you know, we mentioned those infielders, and Emmanuel Rivera is another, you know, depth option that they have um you know outfielders talk about mccarthy they also have dominic fletcher is he completely kind of boxed out of this whole thing jorge barosa is a switch hitting outfielder so at least he gives you a little bit of versatility there and a potential option but um you know he's you know hasn't made the major leagues yet so you have to look at him in that way um blaze alexander is another one he's a he's a right-handed hitting infielder who hit lefties very well last year but again hasn't made the major leagues yet so what are you going to expect from him so yeah it's 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 a it's a there are there is some depth here but there's not a lot of obvious like who the heck is the you know is who's going to be the everyday guy 
in the lineup when it's not jock against a left-handed hitter or against a left-handed pitcher. Um, and so it's going to be, you know, some figuring out to do, but we have, you know, a couple months of spring training to, to, I guess, sort that out a little bit more clear. Yeah. The good news is there's no blaring, uh, glaring, obvious questions about the starting lineup. It's most of the position battles are going to be for backup spots. One question that I do have is, uh, how the heck did ESPN, uh, get this wrong yesterday? They published a story about Yasmani Tomas, a promising young Cuban outfielder, getting promoted to the major leagues. Uh, last time I checked, that happened in 2015, eight years ago or so, almost nine years ago. How the heck did that story go public on ESPN.com yesterday? Was that just, You're a website guy. You write for our website. How does that happen? Um, I can't really honestly say. Uh, my only thing would be if it was accidentally scheduled out ahead and it was scheduled out so far ahead that you know they forgot about it or got lost in translation or something but uh it's a strange because you brought this up that it it doesn't match the same day you know no with a different year or anything like that so i don't know no idea but it was uh, (laughs) certainly amusing to see our friend cody fincher kind of lose his mind on twitter about why he's being reminded of the osmani tomas experience with the arizona diamondbacks especially when they're looking to compete Yeah, he asked me, uh, the important question is, how did it stay up for several hours with nobody noticing? And I said, well, that's probably because you're the only one reading the Diamondbacks ESPN page on January 25th or whatever yesterday was. Um, Yeah, just a bizarre That was before the Peterson stuff, too. So he was really in the weeds. Yeah, no, definitely. It was way before that even happened. So, yeah, I don't know how that happens. I have no idea. It's not a big deal. Um, Certainly, Yasmani Tomas is far in our past. Um, I felt bad for AJ. Jay Shugel, who had to read that he got sent down nine years ago. I felt bad for that guy, but uh, yeah, just to... Weird... It gives you a good, immaculate, great answer if you ever need it, though. Oh, Pirates yeah. Pirates and D-backs. There you go. D-backs and uh, Pirates, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but only a couple of games, so that, that'll get you a good percentage. AJ Shugel, a good name to know. Well, Alex, thanks so much for the insights. Hey, Steve. Uh, Jock Peterson. Wait, wait, wait. Before, before we go, I have, a, I have a trivia question for you. Okay. In 2020... Jock Peterson was traded, but the the team owner of the team that traded for him pulled out of the deal. Do you remember this? So it's a team that he was going to go to, but didn't end up going to. The Dodgers reportedly, or even, I don't know, even know if it was reportedly, I think this happened. The Dodgers traded Jock Peterson in the wake of adding Mookie Betts. Do you remember which team traded for him and which owner pulled out of the deal? In the wake of trading for Mookie Betts. Well, I remember there was another deal that fell through. Was it Minnesota? No. I don't know that. No, they were involved, but that was the Bruce Dar Gratterall trade. That was Bruce Dar. Okay, but that was around the same time, right? Like that that was Yeah, all around the same time. Okay, gotcha. No, I don't remember. I don't remember where Jock was originally going. So the Dodgers and the Angels had a trade lined up that would have sent Jock Peterson and Ross Stripling to Anaheim in exchange for Luis Renjifo. Uh, it also would have sent top pros- or a pretty good prospect, Andy Pages, to the Angels, but Angels owner, Artie Moreno, pulled out of the deal. Right. Okay. Yeah, I see. Which, uh, remember that in hindsight, really. looks like a mistake. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that wouldn't have been like a game changer of a trade, but uh, it, it, I guess by that not happening, Jock has kind of spent the majority of his career in the NL West. Uh, I mean, if there's any pretty much all of it, except away, for one year. Yeah. Yeah. If there's any positive to pull away from this too, it's that he's very familiar with this division. He's going to be very familiar with some of the pitchers in LA, uh, in San Diego, in San Francisco. And there's been a lot of evolution to those starting rotations, even in the last couple of months. Um, but Jock Peterson's very, very much aware of the NL West, and I, I think that probably plays a good bit of a role and a factor in why they went out and acquired him. Yeah, and plus, if that trade had happened, then the Dodgers wouldn't have had Jock Peterson in the 2020 World Series, and he was amazing in the 2020 World Series. Jock has had some really good playoff moments, so if they get into the postseason again, um, if the Dimebacks get into the postseason again, then... You know, they can, you know, sell the Jocktober, you know, mantra once again and see if he can go off again. Yeah, crazy to think about. Well, the Diamondbacks have their new designated hitter, Jock P. 
Peterson, the lefty, will fit r- nicely right there in the middle of the lineup uh, with the rest of the Arizona Diamondbacks. This could be it. This could be the last move for the Arizona Diamondbacks before they arrive for spring training, or they might make more moves in the coming weeks. We'll keep you up to speed on all of that. For Alex Weiner, I'm Steve Zinsmeister. Thank you so much for listening to the Ain't No Fang podcast, and you can find us here at Arizona Sports. Bring on spring training.